Hey everyone, so in today's video, I wanted to jump on here and give you a buy this, don't buy that video. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but really what I wanted to do for this video is compile a bunch of the products that I have and do some comparisons for you guys because a lot of these products, people often compare them. So it's more so just like a big roundup of products and then give you my reviews and my experiences. What formulas do I tend to prefer? Let's show off some products I think people should be talking about. And also this video isn't saying like, go out and buy every single one of these products. More so saying if you were interested in one product, I would look into this other one instead sort of thing. I hope this video ends up being a really great resource for you guys. And as a side note, yes, I have decided to put my bangs back. It's not because I'm growing them out, but honestly, I was getting ready to film this video. You know that scene from The Wolf of Wall Street where he's like, I'm not fucking leaving. I've that's how my bangs were. They're like, we're not fucking doing it. Let's just jump right in. So first we have the Le Essential Natural Glow Foundation. This is a product that you guys really wanted me to try out and I've gotten so many different comments on my feedback about this foundation. It comes in 12 different shades. I personally have the shade 02N, but this shade is definitely too dark for me. So for sure, keep that in mind. $60 for one fluid ounce. So this is definitely a more luxe formula as a whole. And I think a lot of you are right in recommending Recommending this foundation for me. Formula wise, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. There's really a lot to love about this foundation. It gives a very airbrush finish to the skin when you apply it while also looking quite lightweight. And that's not something that you always get. Sometimes more airbrush foundations can tend to be a little bit more creamy on the skin. Like you can kind of see them on the skin. They'll blur the pores, but it still looks like makeup. And this has been able to kind of achieve a really pretty balance of not looking like a lot of makeup while also offering that airbrush finish. But it doesn't run the risk of looking too dry on the skin, which I think is another thing that a lot of more airbrush fluid foundations have. This has found a really nice balance. It wears really well. It blends very easily on the skin and it has good coverage. So for all intents and purposes, I should really love this. And I do really, really enjoy the formula. Here's the thing though. This is incredibly fragranced to the point where you can smell it on your skin. Actually, I applied it one day and my boyfriend walked in the room and he said, wow, you smell really good. He wasn't even that close to me. He was just like, wow, you smell good. No one should ever have that from the foundation that you're putting on your skin, especially because it does run the risk of irritating your skin. I would prefer a lightly fragranced. Best thing is absolutely no fragrance, but because it has so much fragrance, I just don't feel comfortable applying it to my skin. I wish it didn't have fragrance because I really love the formula. I absolutely adore the packaging. I talked about it on a live stream the other day. If I came out with a makeup line, like this really like modern foundation bottle would be like right up my alley. It's some of the prettiest packaging I've ever seen. But unfortunately, the fragrance, I really do keep that in mind. But while we're talking about incredibly, incredibly expensive makeup, I wanted to compare it to a Holy Grail product that I think some of you already know I really, really enjoy, which is the Cojun Doe Aqua Foundation. For years, I have been purchasing this foundation. It is a whopping $77. You get 1.01 ounces. It also only has 10 shades versus the 12 from the Guerlain. This is a holy grail foundation that when I go to purchase it, yeah, it hurts a little bit. I still know that I'm getting the absolute best foundation performance. Everything combined to me, it's just kind of flawless. It looks like skin, but this was actually formulated with photography in mind. It offers this really soft airbrush finish. Like it, it's not even that it's like blurring everything, just the technology within the foundation makes your skin look perfect, but it looks like your skin. I don't know how they've been able to do it, but I really haven't found another foundation that has this formula. This formula is incredibly fluid. You can really build up the coverage, like a solid medium to full coverage. And just no matter what condition my skin is when I apply this, 
it's going to look good. I know it's the foundation I'm gonna wear on my wedding day, like hands down. If you have more oily skin, I'd probably recommend setting it with a powder, but I have recommended this to some of my friends with more combination and oily skin, and they've absolutely fallen in love with it. So though it's an incredibly expensive foundation, what you get to me is just so different than a lot of the other foundations out there. It's kind of the perfect storm. It's my holy grail. So rather than go with something like this that is very heavily fragranced and that in general, I just feel like doesn't look as good as the Cojun dough, you know, this is where I'm gonna spend the big bucks. Next, let's talk about a new launch from Tarte. It is the Tarte C Hydro Sealer. I was incredibly excited to try out this concealer because you guys know in general, I love trying out new concealers because I'm very picky and my skin is very finicky with concealers. I always like to try out new ones to see how the formulas actually perform. It retails for $24 and there are 30 different shades, which is great. And you get 0.21 ounces in here. So I actually have the shade 12 and fair. It's a pretty good shade match for me. Tarte says it has marine algae, which is really good at hydrating the skin. It has niacinamide, which is great for brightening, as well as caffeine. So they've added a lot of really nourishing ingredients. The coverage on here, though, is pretty light. I actually wish that there was a little bit more coverage. Not that I don't like a light coverage concealer, but I just felt like it wasn't giving me enough. And when I would build up the concealer, I actually find that this concealer kind of picks up on itself a little bit, which I do not like. You don't need to set it. It's not an incredibly dewy finish. It's definitely more on the natural side. So as a whole, I actually don't think that it's a bad concealer, but I do think the formula could be more blendable and it could offer more coverage. But this reminded me with its claims, a lot of the claims that the Kosas Revealer Concealer makes. Also does have caffeine and it has a lot of these brightening ingredients to keep the skin hydrated. The Kosas Concealer does not have as good of a shade range as the Tarte though. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. I personally find that finding a good concealer shade match can be a make or break sort of situation. I have the shade one. It's the concealer I have under my eyes today. I've talked about this before, but I just find this concealer to be one of the best that I've ever tried. I have an entire video about my favorite concealers for dry under eyes, so I'll definitely make sure to link that for you. It gives me more coverage than the Tarte. The formula isn't finicky. It doesn't pick back up on itself, but it also sets down the way that the Tarte does. It's a lot less likely to crease under your eyes, which I really like. And it gives a nice, pretty natural finish. I also just find it in general to be more flattering. Not that the Tarte looks dry, but if there was a concealer that would tend to look more dry, it would probably be the Tarte Hydro Sealer. This always looks creamy. It looks natural. And I love that I don't feel the need to set my concealers because I do not like to period so if i can find a concealer that wears a little bit longer is less likely to crease and has some coverage with some hydration this is absolutely one of the best that i've tried so if you've been wondering about the tart i don't think it's a bad product but i do have some others that i would prefer next up we have the maybelline cheek heat retails for 7.99 and you get 0.27 ounces in here the shade i have is coral ardent so this is a gel cream blush and i did mention this already in my my best and worst of affordable cream blushes out there. I'll make sure you have a link to that video as well. I mentioned in that video that this just isn't a winner for me. I don't think that the formula really works. Simply put, it just doesn't offer enough pigment. The color is really pretty. I think it shears out in a pretty way, but it needs more pigment. And I always find when I apply this, I'm like, where did the blush go? It just isn't there anymore. I did mention that I do think this is a good product for some people just getting into makeup. But for most of us, I just don't see this being a product that a lot of people will enjoy because it is so sheer. It doesn't look awful. It just doesn't really look like anything. And we're comparing that to what I'm pretty sure it's trying to do, which is the Glossier Cloud Paints describe themselves as a gel cream blush. Both of these have the little paint tubes with the knobby little screw bottoms. This is definitely kind of trying to be a dupe, at least in my opinion. So the reason that I prefer the Cloud Paints as a whole is they're just more pigmented and they still sheer out in a way that makes them easy to work with. There are more color options with the Glossier Cloud Paints and I find that these give you pigment, but they also last 
last on the skin. These often are a formula that I recommend for those of you with combination to oily skin if you do want a cream blush option for you because these also depending on which color you get will last on the skin. The shade Beam is very close to the shade Coral Ardent from the Cheek Heat line. You can just see immediately it gives you way more pop. These definitely are more expensive than the Cheek Heats. So if you want some other options that are more affordable, definitely check out my affordable cream blush video. But because these are so pigmented, because they're so blendable, you just don't need as much product. So you kind of just have to weigh your options that way. Next up we have the Huda Beauty Tan Tour. This is a contour bronzer product that retails for $30. You get 0.38 ounces of product in here. Comes in five different shades. I have the shade Fair. I have to say I've already talked about this product before, but I just find it to be a little bit too finicky for me. It's actually quite pigmented, and I do think that that contributes to the fact that some days it looks really good, and other days I feel like it just looks a little bit choppy, that, that the blend could be a little bit more even. There are so many other cream bronzer products out there that just have a better and more even blend. I can see how people that want a cream product with more pigment for you know a more glam look would enjoy this, but for me, when the blend on my bronzer is not completely even, I really notice it. And for me, it's just been too much of a toss up for me to be able to recommend the product. But a bronzer that I can recommend is, are the new Freestyle Cream Blushes from Fenty. If you want a compact style bronzer, I think that this blend is better than the Tantor. But if you did watch my video comparing this to the Fenty Matchsticks, you would know I actually in general prefer the Matchsticks to this formula. But if you're looking for an incredibly creamy and blendable cream bronzer that's going to give you a really natural and just pretty bronzed look. I think that this formula is much better than the Tantor. It retails for $32 and you get 0.22 ounces in here, so it is a little bit less product than the Tantor, but there are more shades. There are seven different shades of this. The shade Macchiato is, I think, the closest to the fair shade in the Tantor. So if you're looking for that really easy, compact cream bronzer, this one has a mirror, the formula is really creamy and easy to work with, I would say go with this over the Tantor. Moving on to highlight, we have the Fenty Matchstick in the shade Pearl, which is this really pretty clear translucent balm highlight. You get 0.19 ounces in here for $25. This is really great if you just want a highlight that looks like skin. It's a translucent balm. There's not a pigment to the product. When you apply it onto the skin, it just looks like sheen from your skin. If anything, it looks like a little bit of dew, a little bit of sweat. As a whole, it's really pretty. It's also incredibly lightweight, which is really great because some Sometimes balms tend to be on the heavier side. So I really enjoy that this one is not as heavy. But because of that texture, because it's more lightweight, I do find that this tends to be a little bit slippy. It has a slippy sort of texture to it. It's not really what I was expecting at all. I do have a video about this product as well. So though it's not sticky, that slippiness, I do think isn't the best for all foundation. You know, especially if you're going for a little bit more coverage, I think applying a really slippy product over a more full coverage foundation is probably not what you want to do. But I did recently try out the Catrice Dewy Wet Look Stick. This retails for six. 49 and I can't for the life of me figure out how much product is in here and this to me is one of those translucent balm highlights that really is a good bang for your buck. It's slightly thicker than the Fenty, but it's not as slippy, but it's also not too sticky to where I wouldn't want to apply it onto my skin. So I think as a whole, because this formula is a little bit thicker, I don't think you're going to have as many issues with it picking up your foundation or being too slippy on the skin. I definitely recommend this one. And I also understand that not everyone wants this sort of highlight every day. So if you just wanna experiment with that look of just having a little bit of extra dew on the tops of your cheekbones. This is also more affordable than the Fenty, so you can kind of just experiment with it. Now, I will say that I do think they're discontinuing it. You can still find it on the Catrice website, and I'll link it down below. Again, I do still like this one. I think it looks really natural and pretty on the skin, but I do prefer this texture a little bit, and I do like that it's more versatile. Next up, we have the Glossier Lid Stars, and I have two different shades. I have the shade Bon and Cub. These retail for $18, and you get 0.15 ounces in each. So these are more shimmer liquid cream eyeshadows. They come in these little tubes and you have the doe foot applicators at the end. The amount of pigment you'll get kind of depends on the colors, but Cub and Fawn definitely have the most pigment out of the lot in my opinion. To me, I do think that they look 
pretty, but as I've kind of ventured out and tried a ton of new cream eyeshadows, and I really know my formulas now, I just don't really reach for these anymore. They almost have a sort of frosty quality to them, whereas I like my cream eyeshadows to look really creamy and a little bit like wet. These do set down, but it takes away a little bit of the life to them in my opinion. The shimmer just looks a little bit frosty rather than the shimmer looking wet, which is what I do prefer. I like that glossiness to my lids. So talking about these versus a cream eyeshadow that I really adore and gives me that finish that I want, they are the Rowan eyeshadow palettes. I have the 52 degree palette as well as the 1111. Rosie in the 1111 palette is pretty close to the shade Cub from the Lid Stars. And the shade Yep from the 52 degree palette is very close to Fawn, but Situation from the 1111 palette maybe even closer. I'm wearing them on my lids today Today, and they just give the lids such a creamy look to them. They have shimmer throughout, but the shadow itself kind of translates as a really wet look. These just have the creaminess and the shine that I'm looking for with a cream eyeshadow. I also find that these are easier to work with because they're all more emollient. With the lid stars, though they do last longer, like they're not gonna crease on you the way that these will, they're difficult to build up and work with each other because they do set down quite quickly. I just find with these palettes that the colors were so well thought out, they're creamy and easy to just apply to the lids. And the shine that they give, the skin, very, very unique. Definitely some of my favorite cream eyeshadows out there. So if you're looking for that really wet, shimmery and creamy look, I would say go with something like this. And lastly, we have the Fenty Gloss Bomb in the shade Glass Slipper. You get 0.30 ounces in here for $19. And listen, I'm not gonna stick here for too long because this is a good product. It has a nice balminess to it, but it gives you a really pretty glassy shine really comfortable to wear, easy to reapply. As a whole, it's an incredible clear lip gloss. And you actually get a decent amount of product in here, whereas some other clear lip glosses you get a little bit less. As a whole, I think it's a good lip gloss. Let's compare it to my drugstore favorite, which is the Revlon Super Lustrous The Gloss. And I'm telling you, it's really difficult to tell any sort of difference between this and Gloss Slipper when they're actually applied to the lips. It has that really thin, balmy feeling to it when it's applied to the lips, but it still gives them shine and makes your lips look really healthy. And it definitely sort of fills in the lines of your lips in a really pretty way without it feeling sticky or gloopy. I wanted to throw this one in here just to give you another option because though I do think this is a good product, I think it's worth saving your money and going with something like this. I tend to reach for this one more than I do glass slipper. I just love how easy it is. It always makes my lips feel good when I have it on. Definitely let me know if you guys found this video helpful. You guys know that's like, as a whole, that's really what I like for my content. I want you guys to find value in it. I want it to be helpful. So if it was, definitely make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And I would love for you to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I'll actually have all of the videos that I mentioned in today's video linked down below for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.